Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, recently, last weekend actually, I went up to North Georgia, Georgia to the Feed the Fire school and uh, went up there and gave a talk. Uh, me, Dan Lutz, Mike Denny, J.J. Morse, a lot of good people. And I had a great time doing it. But one of the things that came up, one of our discussions that we got into, was about what was a good bushcraft knife, woodscraft knife, as I prefer to call it. Well now, everybody's got their preference. Let's talk a second or two about what advantages certain designs have over others. Okay? Now let's start with an old pattern that works really good. And that's a Kephart design. One solid tang. Got a little notch there to keep your finger from sliding up. And it's a classic four or five inch long blade. It's about the right size with a center point. Now this is a classic woodscraft knife. But let us define, what is woodscraft? Well, it means I'm gonna fabricate small things from the landscape for my use in the field. Like I say, dingle sticks, pot hangers, pot hooks, improvise this or that. Because the less I have to carry that I can just pick up off the ground and improvise in five minutes and improve my campsite, the better. And I need a knife that can do such designs. I need to be able to make all the cuts like a tri-stick like you see in Nesmuk. I need to be able to shave. Use that 90 degree back spine to shave up sh uh, fine shavings of fat wood and things to catch spark easy, etc. So, having a knife that is relatively small, pardon me, relatively narrow, is a good idea for a woodscraft knife. Of course, it needs a good solid sheath. Now, another design and this is the design I recommend for everybody for starting. If you're wanting to learn woodscraft, and you want to learn to do the cuts and the making of the dingle sticks and the tri sticks and how to do this or that and learn knife skills, one of the best knives you can get is a mower. And this is my old mower that you've seen in tons of my videos. And I'll admit to you in a heartbeat when I bought it, I didn't expect I was gonna like it because of that barrel handle. I figured I'd replace that handle. I never have. This holds a razor sharp edge. It does a great job. You see how narrow it is. It's got a good point. I can choke up here on it to use just the tip if I need to for precision work. That handle, just in any position, you know right where the blade is. You know right where the edge is. And that barrel handle really sold on me after I handled it a while. But a narrow blade is better as a carving tool. Now over in Europe, Scandinavia, they call it sloy. And it means fabricating carving, what we'd call bushcraft, of making things. They make birch bark match containers. They make, you know, all kinds of things off the field. They have really good knife skills. Well, one of the reasons they have really good knife skills, it's bloody cold. And you're sitting for several months out of the year stuck indoors or in enclosed areas so you can develop your knife skills. They've got time by the fire to sit there and develop them and get really good. And so I recommend when you're looking to learn knife skills, look at a lot of these European videos of these guys. They are masters of a knife. A lot of the guys in the UK don't have our woods like we have here in North America. What they consider woods, we'd call a <laughs> an overgrown yard. You know, they just don't have our deep forest available. And so they have they push the skills because they don't have many places to go do stuff. You know, here in America, we're we're overly abundant with the resources that we can get out and practice. A lot of times we have trouble having the time, but when we do, we are just inundated with raw material that we can transform or landscapes we can go visit and do stuff in. So the knife being narrow 
like that. It is a great, it's light, it weighs nothing, is a great companion knife. Even if you're carrying a bigger belt knife, having one of these for the craft knife is a very good idea. These are not terribly expensive, but they're very good quality. And I recommend to anybody getting started out, get a Mora. Now you can get the ones with a handle if you prefer, like the 511s, 501s. But these barrels, handle ones, to me are the better carving knife for doing practicing. Do you want to make primitive traps? Do you want to learn how to make things lock together? Do you want to carve little figurines or whatever? Whatever it is, I like that better for a carving knife. Okay? Now, there's another classic design that you see a lot of in a lot of European vi videos, and that's the bush lore. And this is not an expensive one. This is produced by Condor, and it's actually a decent knife. Solid tang, and it's actually pretty good. It will take a good edge, and it's easy to sharpen in the field. And I used this one in quite a few of my videos early on before I got into custom knives. Now, this knife has more of that classic leaf. It's like a laurel leaf coming up. Points in the center. It's good for doing carving, but you notice it's a good deal wider than like that mora. Now we're getting in more of that splitting. And I don't mean batoning. I don't like the batana knife. To me, that's straining it. Yes, it can do it. And I'm sure you know people that... Oh, he beats it through an anvil with a sledgehammer. Okay. Sooner or later, it's going to snap because you're compressing the fibers. Sooner or later. And that's an expensive knife to have go snap. I would rather, if I'm going to beat something through it, use a $40 knife. You know what I mean? But this knife right here is a good training knife. And it's got a good handle on it for shape. Now, when you get these condors, they're going to be a little bit rough. I'm going to tell you straight up. It's got a good 90-degree spine, but you may have to take any sharp spots off the edge of the handle because it's just not finished that well. But it's a good training knife for doing it. But now that broader blade, now it's easier to split wood because the narrower knife, like the Mora, wants to kind of follow the grain. This has actually got a long enough cross-section. It'll actually split and if you're trying to do long feather sticks, that wider edge, more control, will allow you to get bigger shavings. That way, with practice, more will do a great job too. But it is a way to get some shavings and practice, etc. So, that's not a bad design. Again, it's not expensive. It's under 50 bucks. So if you're looking to get started, the more, definitely, and then maybe one of these. So, 60 bucks total. Get a Mora and get one of these for a starting knife for you guys on budgets. That's my two cents. Now, let's move up a little. A wide knife is better for splitting and where you got to bear down. You got more backbone, okay? Any kind of chopping, more backbone, better for it. So if I'm chopping small kindling, if I'm chopping little green saplings off to make whatever, if I'm, you know, little bitty greens, I'm cutting the coal into making into baskets, vines, whatever, that heavier blade is going to do a better job than the lighter. Because the lighter the blade, the more I'm going to use arm power versus the heavier the knife, the more it's going to do the work. Okay? Now, For many years, I carried this knife, and this was my, I would say, my really first good uh, custom knife that I kept. Uh, William Collins and I talked, and early on, I got this knife from him as a prototype to test out, and you've seen it in tons and tons and tons of my videos, and this is my Master Woodsman prototype. Now, let's talk about this for one second. Notice... Here it's narrow. That means I can get in and make those tighter curves. Notice here it's wider, which means I can chop better and I can go against the grain better with that nice wide. Also in meat cutting and stuff like that. Now I'm stepping up out of woodscraft into also woodscraft 
slash meat processing, game processing, fish processing, etc. Now the shape of this blade allows me to do woodcraft and step up and do my other type of processing of game, the draw cuts and etc. that I get out of this. And if you followed my channel for any length of time, you've seen this knife. This became my knife, my, my most beloved possession. And I still carry it to this day, off and on. But my good friend William Collins, a year ago, this month, uh, as a surprise to me, he took this design and refined it over several things that we had talked about after I'd given him feedback in this original design. And that was that the knife that became my Blackbird knife. Now, I'll get up close where you can show you. But why I'm bringing this up is it was improvements that were being made because of woods craft. The knife was perfect, and I did everything with it. But there's a couple of times I wish it was a touch narrower for making turns in whatever I'm doing. And so when we put those out there, you can see the Blackbird is a touch narrower than the prototype. And this was the prototype for the Master Woodsman, and it's also the prototype for now the Blackbird. But I went to a narrower design, see, so that I still got all the shapes and etc. But now being narrower, I can turn easier and do more cuts. With what I do in my standard uh, everyday work so to speak out here the master wisdom prototype we'll just call it the prototype does a fantastic job but I wanted it you know a little narrower because there were certain things I do especially cleaning fish it was a little too wide to get inside of a bass that wasn't a two pound bass to make the curves to go along the spine and that's where this came in the blackbird was a little bit narrower, see. So my woods craft has now spread out a little bit. And that's going to be true of you as well. You're going to start out doing certain crafts. Perhaps you're already a fisherman and you know what you need for a knife for taking care of fish. Well, I want to breach out and go to, I don't know, carving dingle sticks or carving whatever, or making these primitive traps. Okay, a fillet knife is not going to have the backbone. But a narrow mora, you'll probably have a good deal with, and you'll probably understand, see. Because in your learning of being a woodsman, and learning to be a woodsman, or a woodswoman, either way you want to call it, and I met several ladies up at this event, too. There's a lot of ladies involved with this as well, and I have nothing but respect for them. I really do. The design of the knife that I'm using kind of shows what my overall job that I'm doing in the field. Now, am I doing predominantly shelter building? Because I want to do primitive shelter. I would want a bigger, thicker knife, like the WCSK. That's a chopper slash utility slash one knife does it all, kukri type digging tool, etc. in one knife, which I prefer a kukri for doing that type of field work. But am I building a lot of primitive shelters? I mean, look at what Sean Kelly's doing in his videos, which are awesome, but he's taking and building these elaborate shelters. Some sort of chopper would be a real advantage in his, but also something to do fine detail. That's where the smaller knife comes in. I don't really think that one knife can truly do it all. I believe that one knife can do a lot. And I can do just about anything with this. But could I fell a tree with it? Yes, it would take a while. But I have the skills. Could I take this and make toothpick size splits? Yes, I've got the skills. I'd have to select my wood. Would I want to do a lot of fine, tiny detail carving with this? It's a little awkward for that. Could I do it? Yeah. I'd get tired and have to rest a lot, but I could do it. Now let's flip to the other end. Say, Mora. Could I fell a tree with it? 
I've got the skills. It's going to take a while. <laughs> We're going to take a while. I'm going to first have to carve a mallet. Then I'm going to have to carve some wedges. Then I'm going to have to start cutting until I make the crack to start the wedges, to start pounding, to start. You see what I mean? Could I do it? Yes. It might take all day, but I could do it. Because I understand the knife. But this knife would be far superior to this knife if I'm going to sit there and be doing precision look like I'm going to carve a chess piece. I'm gonna, we're bored and I'm going to sit there and carve an entire chess set. This would be a better choice. See. So when you say to me, what is your preferred woods craft knife? There is everyday carry, general purpose, twice on Sunday. My favorite all-time woods craft knife to have on my belt. In the same breath, there will be other knives with me for different jobs. See? Because I recognize the strength of the knife. Now let's touch, for just a second, because we're talking about this, on a crafting knife. Okay? My favorite crafting knife is the WC NK neck knife. All the curves that I have out of that Master Woodsman prototype, but it's in a much smaller package. Now, yeah, it's broad, but it's kind of short. So I can get up here to this tip and use that tip for tight things. I love this knife for doing traps, for doing small precision work where I'm not using my mora. A lot of times this is a ride all alone knife because I'm not really planning on doing a lot. I'm going out for just a light scout. I'm just going to tote a haversack and I'll probably tote this or my bigger knife, but I don't need the big knife. I just need this. I can process game. I can do whatever with this. And for those guys that like shorter knives, that's perfectly fine. You do not have to have an 18 inch saber. You just need what you need. Now, in my experience, I have used a lot of knives, a lot. Everything from dime store stainless steel pieces of garbage that cost a dollar each, all the way up to custom knives. And it's only been since I got in my YouTube channel and I got to dealing with William Collins that I got to really handling and utilizing custom knives. Why did I get into that? The quality of it. The understanding of it. And how I was able to utilize it. Now, an analogy I gave once, and I'd like to give you again here, is this. A lot of people look at the price of some of them knives at two, three, four hundred dollars, depending. You go, oh my God, it's too much. Okay. I bet the cell phone that you're holding in your hand right now costs more than that. Well, yeah, but, you know, but you wanted that certain cell phone because it had the features you want, the quality you wanted, all the things you wanted, and you were willing to pay that six, seven, eight hundred dollars for that phone that would do that job or on that plan or whatever. Well, I do woodcraft. I do a lot with a knife. So I invested in that kind of knife. I found the design I wanted and then I wanted the quality. I would have no problem carrying the Mora or that uh, Condor as a bushcraft knife. I've done it and have done it on video many, many times and utilized. And they're decent, especially for people who just started out. But now with my skill level the way it is, I've invested in a higher quality knife because ultimately there is no perfect bushcraft survival bug out bag knife. There's the knife you have skill with. There's the knife you can afford. No sense me telling you, you need this knife and it's $800 and it's the greatest knife ever invented. You don't have the skills. On the other hand, I can take someone who has great skills and give them a cheaper knife and they can make it perform because they understand the weakness of the knife. It will dull easy. I don't let it get that dull. When it starts, I whip out and I hone it back up and I keep it at a certain sharpness. If I feel it like it's starting to drag, I take five minutes, I sharpen it up, and I get right back in it. See? But that comes with experience, and that's the hard part. 
Um, there is no prepackaged kit where you can pay and suddenly have 10 years experience with a knife. Unfortunately, you've got to get the dirt time and you've got to experience it with the knife. Or a knife, I should say that. Um, I was in an event three or four years ago. Uh, just a one night overnighter. And several people had radically different knives. And so what we did was we all got in a circle and we would have 10 minutes with this knife. And then at 10 minutes, everybody passed the knife to the left and took the next knife. And we tried it out. And we got to try a lot of knives that way. Some knives I really, really liked. Some knives I didn't. But it was personal preference. I recommend if you're looking for a knife, one, be honest with yourself. It's, it's sometimes really seductive to want to look cool. I want the latest, greatest. I want everybody to look at my belt and go, ooh, because that's that knife that everybody's talking about. And I understand that. I have fell into that too. Don't get me wrong. But be honest with yourself. Pick a knife and learn. If you don't have a lot of skill right now, get a couple of moras. Get a condor bush lower or something equivalent and get a couple of different mowers. Try them out. They're not expensive knives. And learn the skills. If you want to learn to do carving at the house and you don't know what to carve, you can go by Home Depot or whatever, and they already have pre-made up small things of poplar, which I would recommend, or oak, which is a lot harder to carve. I recommend poplar or pine, and you sit there and practice carving in it. Uh, get one of the wooden dowels. Those are going to be hard to carve, guys, because it's hardwood. But a wooden dowel, you can do it. It's just going to be harder to do. A green piece of wood is best. So in the spring, don't kill a tree, but find that straight piece about that long one of them little suckers coming up off the roof, snap it off, and practice like more Kachansky's tri-stick, you know, of all the cuts. That's how you build skill. Unfortunately, you've got to get the blisters. You've got to pay your dues. But when you do, they're your skills. And the more you do it, the more you work with it, the more knives that you try, the more you'll understand what you want, what you need, and what you want to invest in. And then a custom knife doesn't sound so crazy. Or so expensive. If I can buy one, cry once, and be happy for five or ten years, that's pretty good. I know this is kind of a complicated rambling, but and like the individual I was talking to at the event, it's a complicated answer because it's a complicated question. I wish that there was some $79.95 pre-made package and it comes with guaranteed skills and everything and you'd have five years worth of skills and knowledge. I haven't found one of those yet. But I have faith in your ability to learn. If you're watching my videos, you're trying to learn. So take the time. Start out with Morris. Find something that you can carve easily and set yourself some goals. I want to do the entire tri-stick, every one of those notches, in 15 minutes. Okay, you can do that. Now do it in 10. Now you can do that. Now get a hardwood dowel. Much tougher to carve. In 20 minutes, do all of them. You did it, do it in 15. When you can do it, and you're doing it with skill, move on to something else. Go look at primitive traps. Go look at dingle sticks, pot lifters, pot hooks, things to lift and pour water up out of the fire. I've done many videos about those and things like that. Develop the skills. Learn how to split, cut, slice, draw cut, undercut, all of those skills. And when you can do that, Nobody can take that away from you. You know what you're doing. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any uh, 
questions or comments below. And if you hadn't, please hit that like and share button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.